Today, we will be tackling a 20 marker question. First, we'll do a quick briefing of the 20 marker. Then, we'll dive into a deep analysis of the 20 marker, discussing AO1 and AO2, exploring different levels of response, and demonstrating how to structure and plan your answer effectively. So, let's dive in. So, the 20 marker are advice questions. So, for example, ad advise whether Thomas is guilty of any attempted offences. For 20 markers, examiners assess AO1 and AO2. For AO1, you'd get 8 marks, and for AO2, you'd get 12 marks. So, this question requires demonstrating your knowledge and understanding of criminal attempts acts and other acts and common law. Common law is past precedent. So it also needs the application of the le legal rules and principles that you have described. So for example, how Thomas satisfies the elements of attempted theft and assault based on facts from the scenario. You'd need to apply the elements of theft and assault, that is the actus reus and mens rea of theft and assault, on the scenario. So first you describe them and then you apply on the scenario. So... AO1 and AO2. Let's look deeper into AO1 and AO2. AO1 is about demonstrating your knowledge and understanding of the English legal system of rules and principles. The response should be accurate, fully developed and detailed. There should be citation of fully relevant statutes and case law where appropriate. So showing your understanding of the rules and principles is eight marks and then applying the definition of the legal rules to the scenario in order to present a legal argument that is worth 12 marks. That's your AO2, which would be worth 12 marks. So you need to make sure your you so you need to make sure you use appropriate legal terminology and you need to fully develop the application of the legal rules on this scenario. So let's take a look at the levels of AO1. The levels range from 1 to 4. So a level 3 AO1 would be worth to five, 5 to 6 marks. So this would be a good knowledge and understanding of the English legal system and so on. Your response would be detailed but not fully developed in some places. And you'd have a good citation of relevant, mostly relevant case law. But for a level 4, it'd be excellent knowledge and understanding. So you need to show your response should be fully developed and detailed and to the point and the citation of case law should be fully relevant. This is how examiners are going to categorise your answer to decide how many marks it's worth. AO2 is also broken down into four levels. Level 3 is worth 7 to 9 marks. To get these 7 to 9 marks you need a good application of legal rules to the given scenarios the presentation of your legal arguments will be detailed but not fully developed in places and you'll have appropriate legal terminology. So to improve that, to get 12 marks, which is a level 4 answer, you need excellent application of legal rules to a given scenario. You need to present your legal arguments in a way which is fully accurate, developed and detailed and then you need fully appropriate legal terminology. So this is the criteria upon which your answer is going to be based. So now, how should you structure your answer? Because there's going to be, you need an explanation, an AO1 and then an AO2. And because this is worth 20 marks, you don't need to go straight to the point like you do in question one and two. Here you can do a brief introduction which summarises the main legal issues. Then, each paragraph should have an AO1 explaining the legal principles and concepts being discussed, and then it should apply those legal concepts, so the AO2. So it should refer to the specific facts of the scenario to show how those legal principles that have been described how, how have those legal principles been applied? So the AO1 and AO2 go hand in hand inside the paragraph. And then if you have any counter arguments to reach that level 4 band, putting some counter arguments in. Obviously not in every paragraph, you just 
give a brief counter argument at the end of a paragraph and then you should end with a conclusion the conclusion should summarize the main arguments made in the body of the answer and it should provide a clear answer to the question which in this case is liability here's the scenario thomas is at the beach there are a number of surfers one of them richard has left his surfboard while he goes to buy an ice cream Thomas decides to take his surfboard, but as he approaches, Richard's dog starts to bark at him, so Thomas decides to leave the surfboard where it is. Further down the beach, Thomas sees his maths teacher, Mr. Smith, who always makes fun of him in class. Thomas picks up a large rock and throws it at him, but at the same time, Mr. Smith bends over to tie his shoelace, and the rock misses him. Thomas runs off up the beach and sits down in a deck chair. Besides him is Jill, who is sunbathing and has left her handbag next to her. Thomas decides to steal her purse, but when he puts his hands in her handbag, there's nothing inside. So, advise whether Thomas is guilty of any attempted offences. Now, for this scenario, you obviously need to be familiar with your attempted offences. So, now that you're familiar with the scenario, let's begin to quickly plan our answer. To plan your answer, you need to split it up into AO1 and AO2. You should have enough points for AO1 to get 8 marks. The first thing you need to do is define the Criminal Attempts Act. Describe it. Tell the examiner what you know about the Criminal Attempts Act. And then you describe the actus reus of an attempt. To further define the actus reus of an attempt, you can use a case. In this case, Galefa has the defendant embarked on the crime proper. So now you need to apply all of these three whilst he attempts to steal Richard's surfboard. And you need to obviously refer back to the question, has he committed any any attempted offences? And then for when he throws the rock at Mr. Smith, the legal rules and principles you're going to apply on him would be the case Geddes. So equipping, putting yourself in the position isn't enough for an attempt. And you're going to need the men's you're going to need to describe the mens rea intent to commit an offence. And if you really want, you can include a second case, uh Jones. Here you can say Thomas has both the actus reus and mens rea of attempted battery and has moved from planning to implementation. Now obviously in your answer you're going to need to expand on it a bit more. Here's just the main points. And then you can move on to the next uh, person, Jill. So here you could use impossibility. You could describe impossibility. And you can use the cases Isam or Shivpuri. You can apply the factual poss- impossibility by saying the handbag didn't contain a purse. And unlike in Isam, Thomas has intention, has direct intention to steal the purse. And therefore, he'd be guilty of attempted theft. Now, the way to plan your answer is by looking at the scenario. So, you split it up into attempted offences. So, different times where he's almost committed an attempted offence. So, go ahead, write your answer to this question. And then, in the next video, I'll show how I put together my own answer and we'll analyse my answer. You can leave a link in the comments of your own answer and I'll mark it for you and hopefully show you how you can improve your answer. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.